so it's spring. Time to make a new video. So, I've gotten a lot of questions about what exactly this car is. This is my 2000 Volkswagen Cabrio. Uh, it's a three and a half, as you can see, which is kind of interesting what they did to make it a three and a half. But uh, I guess we'll get into that now. So, what exactly makes this a Mark three and a half Cabrio? So, obviously, as you can see, it's got the Mark IV headlights and what appears to be a Mark IV, you know, Golf GTI bumper, but it's actually its own proprietary thing. And what makes that kind of annoying is that these are all, they look like Mark IV parts, but they're not. They're like its own proprietary thing. So the issues I've been running into is that when you got rust like this, like all of these have, you can't just get a Mark IV Golf fender and replace, you have to find a Mark three and a half Cabrio fender. However, they don't make reproductions of those anymore. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut this out and weld it and then repair all this rust myself. So, so obviously this car is not the cleanest example you're ever going to see. It's not perfect by any means. It's a 20 some year old car. You know, it's got ripped seats everywhere. I am planning on redoing that. So if you want to see a video of me redoing my entire interior, uh, leave it down in the comments. Another thing that was special to the Mark three and a half Cabrios was this sort of Mark IV style steering wheel, but it's actually smaller than a Mark IV Golf steering wheel, as well as the dimple dash, which I just absolutely love the, the way that these dashes look. I also made a custom exhaust. This was my first attempt at a custom exhaust for this car. It's a full two and a quarter straight pipe, and it's um, kind of ridiculously loud, so I'll put a clip of that right now. XXR 521 wheels. They're obviously they're reps. They're I don't know what you how you guys feel about reps, but I'm on the fence. You know, like I obviously my goal for this car was to build a budget stance, ignorant as low as it can go build, and you know find whatever parts were left over and just kind of throw it together. And uh, so would I go back and buy these wheels again? Uh, I don't know. I, I like the way that they look, but, you know, being where I am now, a couple years later from where I bought them, or when I first built the setup, I, I don't know if I would have just saved my money and bought real wheels instead of just, you know, settling for, for reps. Even if they are reps, they still look amazing in my opinion, and, you know, there's only going to be a certain amount of people who are actually going to care. Um, you won't find me going up to somebody and calling you out for reps. You know, I don't think it's that big a deal buy whatever wheel you want. If it looks good, it looks good. As you can see by these tires, um, my fitment was meh at first and it's currently raised up from where it was for the winter just so that I could still drive the car and not scrape or have it be, I guess, completely unsafe given that the tires are stretched. They're 195s on a eight inch wheel. Uh, it's not the most stretched I've ever seen, but it's also not anything to, I don't know, scoff at. To achieve this fitment, I currently am using Bilstein coilovers that are actually probably older than the than this car. Um, I pulled them off of my dad's old Corrado when he got new suspension, and uh, are they blown? I Maybe, but they still ride amazing, and would I swap them out if I had new suspension? Probably, if I could go lower. So under the hood, nothing special really. All it is is just a stock ABA. Uh, it's This car has a little over 170,000 miles on it. I've done all like the basic maintenance and just tried to make it, you know, a, uh, a reliable car when that was my goal for this. But like I said, going forward, I'd love to have a VR6 in here instead of a ABA. But another thing that sucks about the three and a half Cabrios is under there is a Mark IV style ECU instead of a Mark III, which makes it a super pain to swap these cars over. So if you guys want to get into a three and a half Cabrio, I would extremely recommend looking for a 99 because they still had all of the Mark III electronics, which makes it so much easier to do a swap with. Whereas this, you can't even tune it because nobody supports this style of ECU because it's not 
like I said, it's like I said, it is a Mark IV ECU, but it's not because it's its own thing. So it's not like a AEG uh, ECU or anything like that, which is the Mark IV two liter. I think it's extremely nice about having a cabrio over, say, like a Mark III or even a Mark IV Golf, is that you know you get you get the convertible um, and like who doesn't love that? I'll put a picture up here of what the car was stock and like the first time that I took it out with all four of my friend or all my friends, we had four people in there and four, you know, bigger guys, like, you know, three of us are over six feet, I think. So, you know, it was, it was pretty funny. Um, and I'll also give you guys a idea of what this thing looked like versus like what it looks like now. Um, but not only do you get a convertible version of a golf, you also can get it for usually a lot cheaper than, or at the same price as say a Mark three or Mark four golf. I bought this thing for Let's just say it was well in the low 1000s. Um, so, you know, like you can find examples like this for 1500 to $2,000, like easy. Whereas like looking for a Mark III Golf, like even like a Mark III GTI with the 2.0 in it, same, basically same car is gonna be one to two grand more than what you'll find this as, which is crazy. Another thing I've come to love about owning this car is just the amount of people who you know, give you compliments and say that they like your car and say that they haven't seen one of these in such a long time, especially, you know, one that's been modified like this. And I get more compliments about this car than my GTI that I've meticulously maintained and sure definitely dumped a lot more money into. So how did I come across this car? So it's an interesting story, actually. So, so I bought this car in March of 2020. So that was right around when the pandemic started to hit and I had gone on spring break from college and I had not I didn't go back for nearly two years we were online school and everything so basically the first week that I was home I was like well if I'm gonna be trapped at home and away from school and my life that I just built for myself in the last couple of months I said well I might as well have something to keep myself busy so I was looking for a project car and after looking for a couple of days this popped up just uh, just down the road from me and uh, the guy who had owned it before me bought it from an older couple and they obviously did an okay job of taking care of the car the car is not perfect by any means but it's still together it's not horrible it sat in a garage for most of its life which is probably why the paint is not super destroyed it's a little rusty but you know what mark three isn't um but this guy had a turbo vr6 swapped mark three cabrio which after i saw that i kind of fell in love with the cars and saw the potential that they really had and that's kind of what i'm looking forward to with this car is that you know i would like to one day be able to put a vr in it and maybe turbo it i would even be okay with doing a turbo on the aba or even the uh, even swapping in a 1.8T. So I'd originally bought the car just to kind of be a, just like a beater car to, you know, inevitably be the car that I would drive back and forth uh, to and from school after, you know, moving home uh, for a while uh, because I had known that like I wasn't going to, um, I wasn't going to be living at school and if I would have to commute, then I would want a car that I could put miles on and not really worry about didn't really want to put miles on my GTI uh, uh, just because it's kind of sentimental to me and uh, I just don't really want to put miles on it and risk it being getting blown up or getting damaged stuff like that I don't I don't I have to drive to the city uh, whenever I go to school so you know I just don't really want to put it in a situation where it could get damaged uh, this however someone else has already done all the most damage to it so uh, but I, I had gotten it as a beater and you know me being like everyone else thought that the pandemic was just going to be you know a couple weeks to a month maybe half a year uh, and I was just gonna use this as my daily and you know push came to shove we were in lockdown for two years and that's kind of why this turned into the car that it is um, just me being at home and bored and just being like oh well, let's put that on the cabrio today or let's get wheels or let's get blah 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 So, so 
what are my future plans for this build going forward for this channel and everything like that um so like i said i'd love to do like looking forward in the far future i'd love to do a vr swap on this car uh ultimately um that would be the engine of choice that i would do my first choice however if someone came to me and said hey you want to you want a 180t or you want a turbo setup for this car for super cheap then you know i'd figure that out uh for a turbo specifically for this car i would have to if i wanted to use the aba i would have to do a standalone ecu uh, which i would have to just figure out how to uh code them or how to wire a micro score together which from what i've looked up is not super hard it's just something i don't really i'd rather run a vr at the end of the day um like i said i'm definitely going to be doing uh like an interior restoration on that thing uh or on this car because i'm not a huge fan of the ripped seats um i can deal with every other thing on this car but not the ripped seats apparently so i'm just gonna be doing a sort of my own custom interior and give you guys kind of the rundown on how that will be and you know how if you want to do it with your car whether it's a cabrio or really any other car how it how easy it is how what struggles i went through and you know with me with very little sewing experience just how you know if it's possible or not so thank you guys for watching again um, i appreciate all the support on the last video i did of my car and i really do enjoy doing this and going forward i want to try to make more time and take more time to make videos like this and and go forward and document all the things that i do to my cars just to you know someone who you know is just getting into it or you know there's not a lot of people who modify like a car like this and just or, or and document and stuff like that so you know people who are just looking into getting into one of these cars will have something to go off of so anyway thank you guys for coming back and watching again and sticking around for the whole video if you made it this far and you know i'll see you in the next one